Why do birth years vary so much depending on where you look? Why do we have such a hard time agreeing upon what years are right for each generation? How do generation birth years work? I will be getting into these questions today. Let's start with a little conversation to demonstrate. I was born in 1996. I'm a millennial. It says right here that I'm a millennial. No, you're not. You're a Gen Z. It says right here, you're a Gen Z. No, you're a zillennial. Why is it so inconsistent? There tends to be a lot of variation in birth years for particular generations. I felt like I needed to make this video to help you understand some of the bigger ideas around the concept of generations and birth years for them. So why the variation? Some of the larger differences in birth years are because not everyone views or uses generations the same way. Some of the smaller differences come from different interpretations, perspectives, and biases within these specific views. At the same time, people can even come to the same conclusions when they have different perspectives. Let's get into some examples. Let's start with the US Census Bureau. Obviously a more US centric perspective, but it's also pretty efficient. They have a very specific view, at least in a sense. At least so far, the US Census Bureau seems to only look at two generations, the baby boomers and millennials, and really mostly the boomers. I have seen them reference the silent generation and provide birth years of 1928 to 1945, but not get much more in depth than that. In 2014, a writer named Bella Bump said he called the US Census Bureau um, for a paper he was doing, and I think the call went something like this. Ring, ring, ring. Hi, U.S. Census Bureau. I have a question about how you define generations. Oh, hi. One second. Do you guys know how we define generations? We only hear about boomers, right? Hi, Philip. I'm going to have to call you back. Hello? Hi, this is a representative of the U.S. Census Bureau returning your call. Here at the U.S. Census Bureau, we do not define the generations. We only define baby boomers who are born from 1946 to 1964. Other generations are not as distinguishable. Still, the U.S. Census Bureau has put out reports on people who they say have birth years similar to millennials. Often the reports they put out will say something like, the birth years for these people roughly correspond to those of millennials. Those birth years have varied over the years and across reports and have included things like 1982 to 2000, 1982 to 1996, the early 80s through the early 2000s, etc. In most but not all reports, they also do specify that they are not defining um, the birth years that way. Often they will say something like there is no official start and end date to when millennials were born. So why do they only recognize boomers. Basically, they saw the post-war baby boom, labeled it a baby boom. People started using the term baby boomers and they were like, sure, these people are baby boomers. They were interested in the boomers due to their large population. A woman named Sandra Colby, who worked at or still works at, I'm not sure, the U.S. Census Bureau, put out some reports. She's put out multiple over the years. And the way she put it, was their transition through life's major milestones has introduced more of a shock to the societal institutions that support those activities than has been the case with other generations. Baby boomers were like this big force coming into society and the evaluations have showed that no other generation so far has really had an impact to the same extent. Another interesting thing Colby says is that unlike the baby boomers, the millennial cohort is largely defined on the basis of experiences and that is why the birth years are loosely defined. So the way she said it is the baby boomers are defined purely on population and that's why they have defined birth years. Even they go so specific in a different report, some other writers there to say mid 1946 to mid 1964 and when you're using just one variable to kind of determine it then it gets a lot easier to get that specific but in contrast the millennials are based off of experiences and it is harder to agree on what is important so that's why they say those are loosely defined at least how they interpret it but it's interesting because they're talking about both generations but using different parameters for how they interpret those generations. Now, even if you use other parameters, a lot of people would still agree with the baby boomer birth years because setting that day after um, the war ending, they're all born post-war, so that kind of sets up some things. They saw the rise of the nuclear family, which you know, I'll get to in a boomer video, but one thing that's not clear to me is why they chose to only really look at millennials and boomers and compare them. It could be because of the generation gap. It could be because millennials are the 
part of the echo boom, the boomerangs, the boomlets, the children of boomers, or whatever. Or it could be because they've seen people talk about the two generations in the media and they wanted to check it out for themselves. The US Census Bureau's look into things did find that there is quite a few differences between the boomers and millennials, but I'm not going to talk about that today. If you do work for the US Census Bureau and you have anything to say, feel free to comment. <laughs> the next perspective is a theoretical approach to generations. In the case of birth years, this means using the theory to inform the birth years. The most known or talked about theory is probably the Strauss-Howe generational theory. The theory was created by William Strauss and Neil Howe. The two got together and did some research and came up with this idea. It incorporates life phases, generational archetypes, turnings, and seculums. They are actually the ones responsible for naming millennials and have been pretty influential in this film if you want to call it a film. So the four life phases their theory uses are childhood, young adult, midlife, and elderhood. And the turnings are the high, the awakening, the unraveling, and the crisis. Do you want to guess which one right now? Along with generational archetypes, these all repeat themselves. It's a cyclical theory and the previous generation and the world they grow up in affects the next and so on. So far, they've had generations last anywhere between 18 and 30 years. Their birth years tend to be similar, but still different from birth years you'll see elsewhere. For example, while they start millennials in 1982, which is close enough to most, they end them in 2004, possibly later than anyone else. Even their boomer years, which are pretty consistent, are slightly off of the norm. I'm not gonna go too in depth right now, but basically the components work together and that is how they decide on the birth years. Well, Strauss has passed, but the, the theory still informs it. A predecessor and I think influence to their theory, though still different, is Ortega y Gasset's pulse rate hypothesis. It's what people call it now. That involved set 30 year cycles and his student, Julian Marias, made it 15 year cycles. Some of the criticism around that particular idea is that it's too rigid and doesn't factor in unique qualities of a time or generation. But other people do see the merits to it. McCrindle, who I've talked about in my Generation Alpha videos, runs a business in Australia, uh, which looks at, at generations. On their website, it says, generational definitions are most useful when they span a set age range and so allow meaningful comparisons across generations. That is why the generations today each span 15 years with Generation Y millennials, um, born from 1980 to 1994, Generation Z from 1995 to 2009, and Generation Alpha from 2010 to 2024. And so it follows that Generation Beta will be born from 2025 to 2039. So right there, you are seeing how he and his researchers decide on the birth years and why. They have a set rule, which makes it easier. So I guess that's probably also part of why he thinks it's okay to be talking about the next generation because a lot of other people will be hesitant because they don't want to define the end birth years yet. Some people will say that actually the youngest members of generation need to reach 18 before you can. Um, not everyone agrees with that. And so they don't really feel they need to do that because they already know what it's going to be based off of the way they do it. Even they still use the 1946 to 64 um boomer birth years though and we're talking they're based in australia and they're using the 15 years so that just it shows you how set the boomer years tend to be more so though uh, you know there are exceptions like stress and how some people like these theories and ways of going about things and others don't another theory is carl Mannheim's theory of generations this is where we get the imprint hypothesis from it's basically the idea that experiencing a big historical event or something big in time will have an effect on people, especially if they're young. This might sound similar to how you think of generations, but the caveat is that only those who experience something big are then a part of a generation in actuality. It has to be some kind of big change. Whereas now we want to put everyone in generation and have them go in order. As I mentioned in my general generations video, Mannheim also recognized that members of a generation, which differ in respect to things like class, experience events differently, creating what he calls generational units. The current mainstream view on generations is almost like a mix of some of the things we've talked about so far. Next, in my videos, you'll sometimes hear me reference Pew Research Center, a nonpartisan think tank which does some research, including a fair bit of research and analysis on generations. Because of this, I I wanted to specifically address them, though what I say is applicable possibly to other organizations as well. I like to use their years because if I want to pull from their research, they would have used those years, though they do change, which I'll get, get into in a second. And they also are continually putting out information 
which is helpful. Plus, many others use the same birth years as Pew, whether because they came to the same conclusion separately or because they are literally taking those birth years from Pew. The Federal Reserve, for example, uses the same birth years currently. So here are the current birth years they use. So how do they determine the birth years? Pew stated in the past they do not use a specific particular formula. At the same time, they say the years are not completely arbitrary. While they may be concerned with more big picture trends, Pew says they consider political, social, and economic factors when setting boundaries. The think tank admits that the cutoffs are not an exact science. They've stated that they are open to recalibration, and that is evidence for certain generations in the past. For example, they've changed the millennial birth years multiple times over the years before getting it a little more pinned down. But it sounds like they would be open to changing it again if they felt it was necessary or relevant. Well, some people ask the question, you know, are generations real? There's so many different perspectives on them. Pew says that there is value in the analysis of generations and that it is often highly illuminating and adds understanding. Now, I also wanted to touch on an academic perspective as a whole, but there's just not enough consensus and really that makes sense. Next. Now, there isn't, this isn't a singular perspective, but I wanted to kind of address the idea of authors, such writers, such books. Often people who are writing books want to show their own unique perspective in the book, so that can be reflected um, in birth years as well. There's obviously some overlap with the other categories. How and Strauss wrote books, Mannheim wrote books, people who work at Pew have wrote books which you could view independently or as an extension, probably depending on the person and how they present it. People in academia write books, etc. There have been many books related to the topic of generations from the broader idea of it, focusing on a specific generation or focusing on a specific topic related to generations. I'm not going to obviously go into every book and author, I'm just going to give you one example. Jean Twenge, a professor of psychology at San Diego State University, is known for some of her uh, research and books on the generations. Here I have the birth years she uses, and she calls Gen Z iGen, which if you want to hear more names for Gen Z, I have a whole video about all the different names people have used for that generation. So for her, she also seems to factor in experiences to an extent when deciding on birth years. She says, for example, iGen is the first generation to experience their entire adolescence with a smartphone, which affected many areas of life. She says she uses an end birth year of 2012 because that is when she started to notice big shifts in large national surveys of teens and adults. Probably similar to some other authors, she is curating these years based on what she personally has seen in her research and others research and what she feels is the right choice so that that's just another you know perspective in her case it's almost as if she's looking for, she's looking for the point where she thinks things have changed and putting that as a star or end year and it also shows you can see slightly different conclusions from similar ideas now let's quickly address some other places that you might see generations use but these are cases where they're usually pulling from other sources one area is marketing slash advertising agency slash business in general some businesses engage in something called generational marketing it is an approach which involves looking at the characteristics opinions behaviors etc of generations in order to market something or the generations and see which generation to market to or something else like that some may use it to try and understand different segments of the population such as in multi-generational marketing not everyone likes this approach and some people actively dislike it but in terms of birth years they will usually be going off of birth years that have been established in some of the other sources like we've talked about but they could also create their own years to meet their own particular goals while looking for examples i wasn't really seeing many examples of the latter where they create their own years, at least not with explanation. So I didn't necessarily know where they got their birth years from, but it could be that they would base it more around a specific thing like technology or a certain experience because it would be more relevant to whatever they're looking at. And then we have the media. They are generally pulling from other sources because usually they're just reporting on it. The years they do end up choosing tend to be the most public facing though, and so that can have a large influence on what people perceive as the years. If a news outlet puts out some birth years from some random smaller thing that just made up some year, that then people might see and say, oh well, CNSBC, obviously made up, said that Gen X is 1950 to 1972. Usually that would not happen, but there are multiple what people would consider reputable sources which have different birth years and which they can then pull from so that also adds in some some mix in perceptions especially depending on where you look and i kind of said this but you know individuals can also just 
come up with their own kind of ideas around things. Some of them have no basis in anything and some, some of them actually have something to them. I hope this provided some insight as to how different groups come up with their years and how generation birth years work overall. So what did you think of all this? What is your perspective on birth years? Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to see more content on the generations. See you next time.